point five, we're going to talk about consecutive integers. Now, what are consecutive integers? Well, they are back-to-back -back numbers. So we're going to look at, at consecutive integers, and these are going to be our back-to-back -back numbers. Now, what do I mean by that? When I talk about back-to-back -back consecutive integers, they're back-to-back -back numbers again, and so that would be like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. And so these have a gap of 1. So there's 1 between each one of these. And so if it's a consecutive integer question, the first number is going to be called x. The second number is going to be x plus 1. And the third number would be x plus 2. Remember that pattern? So if they are consecutive integers, what do we have as a gap between them? They have a gap of 1, right? So each time we're going to add 1. Now what about even or odd consecutive integers? Let's talk about even or odd next. When we talk about even or odd consecutive integers, what are those? 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. Now, what do these have? These have a gap of 2. So when we talk about even or odd consecutive integers, they have a gap of 2. So my first number is x. The second number is x plus 2. And the third number, if you need it, would be x plus So hopefully everyone's kind of familiar with consecutive integers here, and they're back-to-back -back numbers. And if it says even or odd, you have to add 2 each time. If it's just plain consecutive integers, you add 1 each time. We're going to do a couple of these questions. These are very easy to set up. So we'll do two of these. We're going to start with question 13, and this is on page 147. We're going to look at question 13. And I think you'll find these much easier than the ones out of 1.2 when we set them up. So we're going to do 13 and 14. Or sorry, 13 and 15. So let's look at 13 first. So we want to find two consecutive odd integers now whose product is 63. What does product mean? Multiply, right? So when you write these out, we're going to be multiplying them. Now also, what are they? They are odd, okay? So when we talk about odd consecutive integers, the gap is 2. So let's write up our equation, solve it, and get our solutions. So the first number, these are odd. So the first number is going to be x. The second number is x plus 2, because they're odd. Now, we, we talk about product. Remember, product means multiply. So the first number times the second number gives me that 63. The first number times the second number gives you that 63. Is everyone okay with that? When we solve these, we're going to get two solutions. And they're both going to work. We're going to get a positive number and a negative number. So when I when I write this out and solve it, what do we have for our first number? Okay, our first number is x. The second one, what is it? x plus 2. And that equals now 63. And we should have no problem solving this. We distribute through the x. And that gives you x squared 
plus 2x equals my 63. Set it equal to 0. And these should factor out nicely. So that's what we've got. Okay, we're up to this point. First times the last is a minus 63. What do we know about our signs? It's a negative in the box. So are they the same or are they different signs? Different signs. Okay, what's the sign in the middle? So that means the larger one's positive, smaller one's negative. What two numbers? Multiply to give you 63, subtract to give you 2. Yep. Uh, you'll want 9 and 7, right? Someone said it. So positive 9, negative 7, I believe, right? So that's that. Now, we don't have to do factor by grouping. We can jump directly to our factors. So what would they factor into now? x plus 9, right? x minus 7 equals 0. So x plus 9 equals 0. So x equals a negative 9 x minus 7 equals 0, so x equals now what? Positive 7. What are my two solutions going to be? Let's write them out and see what they will be. Okay, the first number is 7. So if my first odd number is 7, what's the next odd number in the list? First number is 7. Next number is going to be what? 9. I can check because 7 times 9 is what? 63. I will have another set of numbers. I will have a negative 9. If I have negative 9 and I add 2 to it, what do I get? Negative 7. Those multiply together also to give you 63 because a negative and a negative makes that now a positive. Is everyone okay with that? So we got our two sets of numbers, and this is how we write our answers. Let's do another one of these. This one is going to work with some of the squares. So we're going to look at question 14. So we're going to be squaring these numbers. And again, on 14, yeah, sorry, 15, not 14, uh, 15, these are odd numbers again. So let's look at question 15. Same page, 147 again. The sum of the squares of two consecutive odd integers is 2 of 2. So we are going to be working with the sum of the squares. Now, I underlined here odd, so that means my gap is going to be 2. So when I write these up, again, these are odd. So my first number is x. My second number is plus 2, right? And what am I doing here? I'm taking the first number, squaring it, adding it to the second number, squaring it, and what does it have to come out to give you? It has to come out to give you what? 202. Write out your 1 squared. 1 is x, so that's going to be x squared. Write out the second one, so that is x plus 2. Use the quantity squared here, and that equals 202. Work on this for just a few seconds. I've got to walk over across the hall and make sure those uh, people who are making up their test are still working on it. So I'll be right back. I just need to go check on a couple of testers. But work that out, and we'll finish it when I get back.
Okay, if we were to, to work on this one, what are we going to have to do? First thing we're going to have to do, well, we can't use a square property. First thing we have to do is we have to get rid of that parentheses. So that's going to have to be done separately. So if I gave you a question like this one, we need to eventually set it to zero. We can't use a square root property because we've got two squares. If we just had one, we could. But in this case, we've got two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x plus 2 quantity squared, and I'm going to write it out. And I'm going to have to apply the FOIL method. So I'm going to have to FOIL this out first. That's going to be your first step in solving this. And that gives you x squared, 2x, 2x, and 4, which is then x squared plus 4x plus 4. that's going to equal your 202. So I just wrote this out separately. I took it and I foiled it. Now then I put it back over here. We're going to combine like terms so these x squareds can go together. And I'm going to move that 202 over. And that leaves me then with 2x squared plus 4x minus 1, it looks like, 98. And that equals 0. What can I do before I factor? Can I, is there something in common that I can divide out? Yes. You always, always want to divide out what's in common first. It's going to make it substantially easier. These are all even numbers, therefore a 2 is going to go into everything. So I'm going to divide all of these numbers by 2. And that's going to make it substantially easier to factor. So divide everything by a 2. So that leaves you then with x squared plus 2x again minus 99 it looks like equals 0. 99 goes in the box and it is negative. what two numbers are going to work? Okay, yep. Positive 11, negative 9, isn't it? That's right. Okay, so doing it all correctly. A lot of times, though, I will see students giving the answers of 11 and negative 9. That is not correct, right? Because you have to actually set it to 0, and you have to watch it because your signs will change. So write it out as x plus 11 x minus 9 equals 0, and so x plus 11 equals 0, so one solution is negative 11. x minus 9 equals 0, so x equals now what? 9. Now, what are my solutions going to be? What are my numbers? Okay, the first one, let's do the positive first. The first number is 9, so the next number is going to be what? 11. Now, how can we check them? They should square, and they should give you what? 202, shouldn't they? Okay, goes back in the original. When we square them and add them together, they should give you 202. And this one works because when we check, 81, or sorry, not 81, uh, 9 squared plus 11 squared equals 2 of 2 because that's 81 and 121. And that gives you 2 of 2 equals 2 of 2. So see how it checks there. What's the other set going to be? Yep, negative 11 and negative 9, right? 
Now they also work because when you square a negative, what happens to that negative? It becomes positive, right? So that's why you have a positive set and you have a negative set. And that's the way we write them out. So there's four numbers total, two in each set. Do what now? Um, well, they can equal a positive in this case, right? Um, it should equal a positive on the side, but, but you're going to have a positive set and a negative set on this for the most part. Okay, so that's that's how those are going to work there. But yeah, you, it's, it's going to equal that in this case, that positive to a T. It should come out to be a positive one. Okay, so let's now look at another type of equation. Or, sorry, of, of questions to solve. We're now going to look at geometric figures. And we're going to talk about one of these. So we're going to look at question 31. And there's one very, very similar to this in your homework. It's almost identical, a little bit different though. But it's going to look like question 31. When I picked out questions for your homework, I was very careful and I tried to pick questions that weren't really difficult to work through. Sometimes these questions can take a long time. So I was careful when I did your homework to not give you a whole bunch of really difficult questions. As you can tell, some of these are easy, some of them are not. Question 31 works with the square. Now, what do we know about a square? What's the difference between a square and a rectangle? Yep, all equal sides, okay? And when we talk about the area, that's length times width. What about a perimeter? Perimeter is if we add up all the sides. Okay, so we're going to need those facts. So let's look now at question 31. What is the length of a side of a square if its area and its perimeter are numerically equal. That means they're going to be the same. We have to know that this is a square. This would not work with a rectangle. It has to be a square for this to work. And since it's a square, what do we know about the sides? Do we know either of the sides? No, but we know all the sides are what? The same and they're going to be x. And the area of this square is length times width so that's x times x, and that would be now x what? x squared. Is everyone okay with that? Length times width. Now what about perimeter? Perimeter is sum of all sides. And so your perimeter would be, if we add them up, 4x, wouldn't it? Now, what does it say from the question? It says, in this question, it says that the area and the perimeter are equal. So it's easy enough to write up our equation. So now the area equals the perimeter. Because they're numerically equal, they're the same. The area is x squared. The perimeter is 4x. And how are we going to solve this? We have three different ways we could solve it. Zero factor, quadratic formula, or the square root property. Which one do you think we would use to solve this? Okay. Uh, you wouldn't use the square root property. Why not? Because you've got an x squared here and an x on the other side. If you have more than one variable, if you have the, if you have the, the tw two, of the, two of the same variable, like an x and an x squared, you can't use the square root property. But what you can use is zero factor, right? Because we can't use the square root property because both sides have an x on it. So we're going to move this over, and we're going to set this equal to zero. So we're going to be using the zero factor. Some of them later on will use the square root property. This one uses zero factor. So we're going to set it to zero. Now, what can we factor out of here? Okay, nx. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this out. And so that x can come out. And then I'm left with 
x minus 4. And this is a prime example of a question where we get two solutions, but only one of them actually makes sense. So on several of these, you'll get two solutions and they both work, like the consecutive integer questions, two solutions. This one will get two, but only one of them is going to make sense, because what are my two solutions? Well, the first one, we factored in x out, so x equals 0. What about the other one? x minus 4 equals 0, so x equals then 4. Now, which one would not make sense for a square? 0, right? So this one doesn't work. So what's the length and the width of the square? 4. There's no units, so your answer would simply be x equals now what? 4. And that is a square where the area and the perimeter are the same. Because 4 squared is 16, right? And 4 times 4 is also 16. 0 doesn't work because it, it's technically a solution, but you can't have a square with 0 length of width. So we can throw it away. Same thing when we solve some others. Okay, when we solve some others, if you get a negative answer, that wouldn't work either. So on these, you have to be careful about your solutions. If you're working with time, time can't be negative. Neither can a length or a width. So those would get thrown out. So you have to watch your solutions and take them back into context with the actual question. The next ones that we're going to look at, or next type, is using the quadratic, or, sorry, the Pythagorean theorem. And these are going to require us to either use the square root property or the quadratic formula. These are going to be using, for the most part on these, the square root property. Later questions, though, will be using the quadratic formula. So we're going to be looking at the easier ones first. And so we're going to start with question 38. And this is on page 150. And we need to talk first about the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the Pythagorean theorem works with right triangles. So Pythagoras is a very famous Greek mathematician. And Pythagoras came up with his, his famous theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, many of you are, are probably familiar with this. This is used a lot by carpenters when they build frames for houses and Frames for doors to check for square. They use a three, four, five triangle to check to make sure something is square. And that's based off of the Pythagorean theorem. So this is our Pythagorean theorem. Now, some of these questions are much difficult, more difficult than others. We're going to start with an easier one first. We're going to work with 38. So Yolanda has a solar panel with the width of 26 inches. To get the proper inclination for her climate, she needs a right triangular support frame It's one leg twice as long as the other. To the nearest tenth of an inch, what dimension should it have? So tenth of an inch, that means we're going to have to round. Whenever we have to round, it's probably either going to come from the quadratic formula or the square root property. If you say round in the question, or see round in the question, it's going to be quadratic formula or square root property, one or the other, because it won't factor out nicely. So let's try to come up with our picture. So we're going to try to build a triangular support frame for this solar panel. Now we know the solar panel is 26 inches across. Do we know the height of this panel, or of the leg? No. Do we know the length of the leg down here? No, but how do they go together? It says one leg is twice as long as the other. So that would be twice as long, and that would be 2x, wouldn't it? Is everyone okay with how I got that? Got that done. So here's the panel. 
So we're going to have to build a support frame. So this is going to be the unknown. This is x. The other one's 2x. Now, when we draw our diagram and label it, you have to make sure that the C is the diagonal. That's the important part. The others don't matter. Make sure that the C is the diagonal. A and B can be either one. Doesn't matter. Just make sure that that C is the diagonal. Now we know that A squared plus B squared is C squared. So that is X squared plus 2x quantity squared equals 26 squared. Is everyone okay with how I did that? Does everyone see where I got the pieces from? Here's where students typically make the mistake. Notice when I plugged in that b, which was the 2x, I put parentheses around it, right? I put parentheses around it because when we square it, the square has to go through. So when you square it, it's going to become the x squared out in front. But when you square this 2, it becomes a 4x squared. And then we take our 26 and we square it out as well. And 26 squared is 676. Now we can add the x squareds together and we get 5x squared equals 676. Let's take a moment to talk about why this one is going to be the square root property. Why are we going to use the square root property? Well, to use the square root property, we have to have, the only x we have is an x squared. Okay, that x squared has to be by itself on the left, which it is. Okay, there's no other x's. All we have is an x squared. We are going to use the square root property because it's by itself. So what would I do? Well, to use the square root property, I would get it by itself. So I divide it by 5. Okay, so there's that piece. Now, we want to get rid of a square. And what's the opposite of a square? Square root. And don't forget your plus or minus. Now, we're not going to worry about the negative solution because we cannot have a negative length or width. It's there, but we can't use it. How do I solve this out? What does it say to round out to? Okay, it says on this one, it says to the nearest tenth of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up first. And you can do this all at once in your calculator, or you can break it up in pieces. I'll probably just use it all at once in our calculator. So how would I do it? Most of you have this type of calculator, 676, and we're going to divide that by 5. Okay, that's 135.2. Now, you can either write that down and then use the square root key, or you can store it in your calculator. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the second square. Okay, that gives me the square root symbol. Now, how do I get that 135.2? Well, I go down at the very bottom of your calculator, and you see in blue, see it has, see it has A and S there? I know it's hard to see, but that's your answer. So you hit second, the blue button, and then answer. And that's going to keep the answer stored in there. And then we get our solution of when we round 11.6. So that will give you now x equals plus or minus 11.6. Now, why do we not worry about the negative one? And there's actually two solutions. This is the plus or minus. Why is this negative one not going to matter? Because I can't have a negative length or width, can I? So it's gone. It wants the dimensions of the frame. What does our frame look like? Okay, our frame looked like this. This was x, so this one's 11.6 inches there. What about the other one? What is it going to be? The other one is 2x, so that's going to be 2 times the 11.6. 
and 2 times that 11.6, well, that comes out to be 23.2. So there are the solutions to this question. We have two of them, right? We can get rid of that 11.6 that's negative because we can't have a negative length of width. Is everyone all right with how I set that one up? It's just using the Pythagorean theorem. The next one's a little bit more difficult. Question 40. And then after we do question 40, then we'll go back and if we have time, which I, I think we will, we'll, we'll go back and look at one of the most difficult ones. So let's look at question 40. And this one is working with a distance. And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this question out. So we're going to have to come up with a right triangle. So we've got two people walking, and we want to find their distance apart to be four. How long is it going to take? So let's, let's read through question 40. Tanner and Sheldon have purchased communication receivers, so CBs, and if they leave from the same point at time, Tanner walking north at two and a half miles an hour, Sheldon walk east at three, how long will they be able to, to talk to each other if the range on the communications receivers is four miles? And we want to round to the nearest minute. It sounds more difficult than what it really is. Well, let's start with the diagram. So we have two people. We have Tanner and we have Shelton. This is where we're going to start from. And so Tanner's going to go north. So he's going to be going up north here. And Sheldon's going east. Each of these, again, just like we did in 1.2, has a rate and a time, and they're going to multiply together to give you the distance, because rate times time is your distance. So Tanner's rate of speed is 2.5. Time is unknown. That's x. Sheldon's rate of speed is 3 time is x. So that's what we've got. Now what's each one's distance? What's the distance here? Let's talk about what we've got. Remember, distance is the rate times the time. So for Tanner, that's going to be 2.5x. And what about the distance for Sheldon? Yep. And that's going to be 3x. Now we can build our triangle. So 2.5x is here. 3x is here. And how far apart do they need to be? 4 miles, right? So that means the 4 is going to go here because these are our distances. That's going to go there with the four. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've now got this down to a triangle. Now, the four miles goes here because it's the shortest path between two points. Right? It's a straight line. So that's, that's going to be how far they can go. So depending upon how far it slides out, my distance apart is always going to be four. That diagonal is always going to be the four there. doesn't matter which one's your A and your B as long as the diagonal is your C. So the diagonal needs to be 4. 
And we've got a and we've got our b over here. And we know that a squared plus b squared is c squared. And when we fill this in, we get 2.5x squared plus 3x squared. And what does it equal? 4 squared. I'll be right back in just a moment. I just need to go check on, on the testers across the hall real quick. Try to work this out. You'll be using the square root property, and we'll finish it when I get back. So you're going to have to square and then use the square root property. make sure we know how to solve this one out now. So we're going to have to square, so be very careful with that 2.5. That 2.5 has got to be squared. So we use our calculator to square out that 2.5. And that's going to be what? 6.25, I believe. Because we've got 2.5, we've got to square it. So that's your 6.25 x squared there, 3 squared is 9x squared there, 4 squared is 16. We'll add those together, and that gives you 15.25x squared equals 16. Is everyone around with that so far? Now, when we get our answer, our answer is in hours, but they want it to the nearest minute. So when we get our answer, we're going to have to multiply it by 60 so that we can get the number of minutes that it takes. Because they don't want hours, they want it in terms of minutes. So what are we going to do? We're going to use our square root property. So we're going to divide by our 15.25 on each side. And now that gives you x squared equals that. Okay, we're going to get rid of it. By using what? How do we get rid of the square? Square root. So let's go ahead and take our square root, plus or minus. Now, I'm not even going to write the negative case down, because we know it's not going to be there. But there is technically a plus or minus. But I'm only going to write down the positive case, because we can't have a negative time. So let's see what we get here. When we divide out, we can use our calculator. So we've got 16. Divide that by 15.25. That gives you that. Now that's not our answer yet because we have to take our square roots. We can hit the second square root key. Second answer. Now we're going to round. And that gives you one point if we round zero to four. Now this is in terms of hours. Okay, but we don't want hours. We want minutes. So if we want minutes, what do we need to do? Yep, we need to take this 1.024, and we're going to multiply it by 60, and then we're going to round to the nearest minute. 
So 1.024, we're going to multiply that by 60. And that gives me then, when we round, 61 minutes. So they should be able to talk for 61 minutes before they lose their signal. Is everyone okay with that one? Okay, we've got enough time, I think, to try question 35. Question 35 is easy to set up, but it's going to take time to solve. This is question 35. It looks easy. And it's easy to set up, but we're going to have to do quite a bit of algebra to actually solve it. It's going to factor. How do I know it's going to factor? Does it say anything about rounding in here at all? Does it say round at all? No. If it doesn't say round, it's probably going to factor out nicely. So we're looking at the height of a dock. So you've got a dock here, and you've got a length of rope here going out to a boat. And it's 12 feet from the boat to the dock. We need to find the length of the rope and the height. So we already have the triangle drawn. This is where it's difficult to solve it, though. It's already set up, but it will take us a moment to work through and solve. However, it's already set up. <coughs> Okay, so this one, we're going to have to solve it, and we're going to use zero factor. It, again, is a Pythagorean theorem. And so we're going to write up our equation and solve it. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's going to be h squared plus 12 squared equals 2h plus 3 quantity squared. This one is just going to take a little bit of time to actually solve out because we're going to have to foil on the right hand side. We're going to have to set it to zero and then we're going to have to factor it and probably use factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and do our parentheses first. So we've got 2h plus 3. We're going to square it, so that means we write it out twice and foil. Just like we did earlier. We've got to get rid of our parentheses first. So if you need to draw your arrows here. So 2 times 2 makes it a 4h squared. And we've got a 6h, another 6h. And 3 and 3 makes it 9. So that is then 4h squared plus 12h plus 9. And let's rewrite this. We know that 12 squared is 144. So that's going to come down as 144. And the other side is a 4h squared plus 12h plus 9. So is everyone all right with that so far? What are we going to have to do? Well, we're going to have to set this to zero, so we'll move things around. And we're going to factor it. So we're going to move that h squared over. And we're going to move that 144 over as well. And now we've got 3h squared plus 12h minus, we've got 144 minus 9. That's a 135, and that equals 0. And 
what am I going to do next? Can someone tell me what I can do next? Yeah, we can divide by three. Always, always check for that. If you don't divide by the three, you're going to end up with really large numbers to try and factor. But we are really, really lucky in this case because everything is divisible by three, and that makes our work substantially easier. So since it's all divisible by three, we can do that. Always, always check that first. Are we finished? All right. Thank you very much. Circuit here. And before I forget, let me go ahead and pass out the sign-in sheet too. We've got several more questions to look at. But before I forget, let me pass out the sign-in sheet. So we're going to divide everything by a 3. And when we divide everything by a 3, that means we don't have to do factor by groupings anymore. So that's going to make it quite a bit easier. So divide everything by 3, and that leaves you with an h squared plus 4h minus 45, and that equals 0. Now we should be able to factor it. It might be difficult to see, but let's try to find our numbers. First times the last is a minus 45. And that tells me one is positive, one is negative, larger one's positive. And what two numbers would work here? Yep, 9 and 5, isn't it? Yep. It's positive 9, negative 5. Write it out. H plus 9, H minus 5. So H plus 9 equals 0. So H equals negative 9 h minus 5 equals 0, so h equals 5. Now, which one of these is not going to be a legitimate answer? Negative 9. Why not? We cannot have a negative height or a negative width. So we have two of them, but that one's gone. What's our units here? Let's go back and look and make sure we answer the question. And that was just a little bit harder to factor out and work with. But it's going to be in feet, right? And we want to find the height of the dock. So we did it correctly. So my height would then be 5 feet. Is everyone all right with that? That one just took a little bit longer because what we had to do was we had to foil. We had to set it to 0. We had to factor. So we had to do all of that. So, so far, we've looked at questions that involve the Pythagorean theorem. We've talked about some geometric figure questions with the square. We've also talked about consecutive integers. The last questions that we're going to look at are dealing with gravity. So we're going to have to make sure we understand gravity and how it works. When I throw something up in the air, what happens to it? When I throw a ball up in the air, what happens? It comes back down, right? What makes it come back down? Gravity. Now, there are three different outcomes that can happen when we work with projectile motion. Throwing something up in the air or launching a rocket, there are three different things that can happen. So I'm going to draw you a picture so you'll understand how we can get the different solutions. Okay, so we're going to use a rocket ship here. Now this rock is going to go up in the air, and it's going to come back down. I mean, I know, horrible drawing, but it's all right. So that's going to be a rocket ship here. It's going to go up in the air, and it's going to come back down. This is your time, and this is the distance. Now this one, oh, yep, thank you very much. Did you skip the two questions? Did, did you want to skip two? Okay, yep, I'll grade them all. Okay. So let's now go ahead and look at this. Now you're going to get two solutions, depending upon how I draw the line. If I say 50 feet here, 
I'm going to get two solutions because it touches the curve in two places. So this one has two solutions. Why does it have two solutions? Well, it's going to cross this at two places, right? So two different times. So you have a time going up and a time coming back. That's one thing that can happen. Another possibility is you can get one solution. The rocket ship here is going to go back up in the air and come back down. But let's say this is 90 here. And it's going to touch one spot. So this one would have one solution. And so that can happen. One solution is going to go up. You're going to ask for where it crosses up at the very top. And the last one is no solution. That can't happen. And that would be something like this. Here's our, our rocket going up in the air again. And let's say I ask for a height of, let's say, oh, we'll make a number here. How about 120? Okay, if I ask for a height of 120, it never crosses, does it? So this would have no solution. And how would you know that you have no solution? You're going to end up with complex numbers. So this one has complex numbers. So if you start getting complex numbers, then you know that you're asking for something that doesn't ever happen. You're asking for it to go to a height of 120 feet, but it never goes there because it may stop at 90. So you're asking for something that can't happen. And you would see that mathematically in complex numbers. So if you get any imaginary numbers, it's automatically no solution. So here's our, our possible choices. Two solutions, meaning goes up, comes back down. One solution, where you ask for the highest point. And no solution, where you ask for something that can't happen. That rocket never goes up to 120, so it has no solution. And it, you would know that because you would start getting complex numbers. Now let's look at one of these questions here. And we're going to look at question number, um, let's see here. How about we look at question number, um, how about 40, let me come up with one that gives us good answers, easy to work with solutions here. How about, um, uh, let me come up with one that gives us perfect numbers. How about uh, question 43? Okay, let's look at question 43. We're going to do part A, and we're going to do part B. And this is on page 150. And then if we have time, we'll do one more. We'll just see how the time goes. Okay, so question 43, they give you this. And you're going to have to plug the values in. They give you S equals minus 16 T squared plus V naught T. S is the ending height. T is the time. V naught, and that said V naught by the way, V naught is the starting velocity or starting speed. And what does that minus 16 represent? Okay, now if I'm throwing something up in the air, what makes it come back down? Gravity, okay? So that's why it's negative. And that minus 16, that's the gravitational constant on Earth. So this is gravity. So just so you know what the pieces are, S is going to be where you end up at. It always has that minus 16 or 9.8, 9.8 in our metric, uh, minus 16, that represents our English units, so that's feet per second. 9.8 would be meters per second, which some of them will see 9.8, but that's your gravity. Then you multiply that by your time and your, your starting speed. 
So the more power you have, the longer it's going to go up in the air. Now, what do they want on question 43? They give you a V naught of 96. So that's given in question 43. Now, what we want is there's two parts here. For part A, we want to find the height to go up to, the time to go up to 80 feet. So part A is 80 feet. So we want to find the time it takes it to go to 80 feet. Now this 80 feet, that's going to be the ending height, so that's represented by your S there. Because you want to know how long it takes this projectile, this rocket, to reach a height of 80 feet. So now we can plug our, our information in. So we've got S equals minus 16 T squared plus V naught T. We can put in our pieces because we know we want a height of 80 feet. That's there. We still have that minus 16 T squared. Now our V naught was 96 and that's going to be a 96 T. How do we solve this? We've done a lot of these. We set it equal to what? Zero. And that's a minus 16t squared plus 96t minus 80 equals zero. Always, always, always check your numbers before you begin. Can I divide everything out by something? Is there some number that's in common here? Uh, the 16, well, A will work. Let's see if 16 will go. You always want to use the largest number. Always check that 16 in front. Okay, 96, yep, it's divided by, divisible by 16, isn't it? And we don't want to just divide by 16. We also want to divide by negative 16 because we don't want to have negatives at the beginning. So we're going to divide everything by a negative 16. That makes that then a positive t squared. 96 divided by negative 16. Well, that's going to be a negative 6t. Negative and negative makes it a positive. And 80 divided by 16 is a 5. Is everyone right with that? Now it's easy. Now we know what to do. We can quickly, we can easily get our solutions. Did you mark off two that don't want me to grade? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yep. All right. Hey, thank you very much. And I will get this graded. I'll put it in Canvas, but I'll, I'll bring it back on Thursday as well. Yep, you're welcome. You have a great rest of your day. So let's now go ahead and factor this. First times the last, what would that be? Five. What two numbers are going to go here? Five and one. And negative in the middle, so those are both negatives. So we need a t minus 5, t minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so now we've got t minus 5 equals 0. So t equals 5, there's that one. t minus 1 equals 0, so t equals now 1. There's your two solutions. And these are going to be in terms of seconds, because these are in times. So we've got two times, we've got five seconds, and we've got one second. And these are both legitimate answers. Why? Because it's time, right? And they're positive. Why do we have two? Because it's going up, and then it's doing what? Coming back down. So that's why you get two. What about part B? Now, part B, we want to return to the ground. So part B says return to the ground.
If I say return to the ground, what is my ending height then going to be? Zeros. So I'm going to use, in this case for part B, I'm going to be using S equals zero because we want to return to the ground. So that means we're going to be plugging in the zero. So let's write up our formula again. We're keeping everything the same. And then we've already plugged in that 96 for the V naught down. We now know that your S is going to be zero. And how would we solve this? Does anyone have any idea? Well, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to rewrite it so it's in the correct order. I like it from left to right, so we're going to, we're going to put that zero to the other side. Does anyone know how we would solve this? What would we do? Okay. We can go ahead and reduce this down. We've got a 16 and a 96. Can I divide something out? Yep. And negative, I like to keep it positive. So we're going to divide everything by negative 16. Now we've got t squared minus 6t equals 0. What would I do next? Okay, common factor. What's my common factor? That is a t. So that t comes out, and that leaves you then with a t minus 6 equals 0. We are going to get two solutions, but one of them really doesn't work for us. What are my two solutions? Okay, t equals 0, and the other one is t minus 6 equals 0, so t equals 6 seconds. Now, why does a zero make sense, but not really what we want? Okay, because that's where you start at, right? This one, we're not even going to really use, because that's, that's where you start. Because at time zero, it's at zero feet. Okay, it starts on the ground and goes up. So that's why at zero, your, your time is also zero. So that one doesn't matter, because it's a trivial one. But what we do get is we get six seconds. So it's going to take six seconds for this rocket to go up in the air and then come back down. Now I think we have enough time to do part A of question 47. Should be able to have enough time I think to get through that one. So we're only going to do part A. We're not going to do part B. We're only going to do part A. And we'll look now at question 47. So this is our equation, and it, it's a different number than the minus 16 because on, on question 47, what we're looking at is we're looking at something on the moon. And gravity is less on the moon, that's why this number is smaller. And for part A, it says we want 12 feet. So what are we going to plug in for the S then? Yep, S is going to be 12. So that's all we have to do is plug in the correct value. So we're going to plug in S is 12. Now this one is going to require us to use the quadratic formula. So that one was just plugging things in. But when we go to solve this one, it's not going to solve out nicely. And we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Also, with the quadratic formula, we're going to have to use decimals, which we haven't done before. That's why I wanted to make sure we did this question. We're going to set it to zero. And then it's minus 2.7t squared plus 30t. And I believe that's going to be a minus 5.5. So there's that piece. Now, we never ever want to start the quadratic formula with a negative number. So I'm going to get rid of the negative by dividing everything by a negative one. Or multiplying. Same thing. So get rid of the negative. 
And that's going to make it now 2.7 t squared minus 30 t plus 5.5. This one is not going to factor. And this one, it tells us to round, and it tells us to round to the nearest hundred. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And we're going to be rounding. So A is 2.7, B is going to be a negative 30, and C is minus 5.5. Okay, are we finished? All right, thank you very much. And did we skip the two questions? Yep. Okay. Yep, four and six. All right, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, cool. And we skipped question one. And question 22. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead now and use our quadratic formula. I always like to write the formula up before I plug my values in. And we're going to plug in my values, so we have a minus, parentheses, minus 30, plus or minus the square root now of a minus 30 squared, minus 4, times A, which is that 2.7, B, which is that, or sorry, sorry C, which is that minus 5.5, That's all going to be over 2 times 2.7. Is everyone okay with that so far? Yep, 4AC there. Yep, everything's right, isn't it? Yep, make sure I don't make a mistake. Make sure I got all the signs correct. Everything looks right. Make sure I plugged everything in correctly. Yep, I think everything's right here. Okay, so moved it over. Yeah, sorry about that. That should be a negative. I knew something was wrong. It should be a negative, shouldn't it? I just wrote it down wrong. Oh, wait. Well, when you did that, made it positive. My mistake. Sorry about that. Yep, I knew there was a mistake somewhere. I could, I could feel there was a mistake. I couldn't see it. But we divided everything by a negative, so let's double check that. Negative and negative made that a positive. Positive 30 over negative 1 makes it a negative 30. I knew there was a mistake somewhere. Negative over negative makes it a positive, so that's going to be a positive there. Sorry about that. Yep, I knew there was a mistake somewhere. I just had to find it. So now all our signs are correct. What are we now going to do? Okay, we're going to break this up. We know that double negative here makes this positive. So let's clean this up. And so that's going to be 30 plus or minus. And we've got 2 times that 2.7. Well, that's a 5.4. We'll do our discriminant over to the side. And that is a negative 30 squared minus 4 times 2.7. It's 5.5. And that's 900. Single negative stays negative. 4 times 2.7 times 5.5. Well, that comes out to be a... 59.4 there, okay, just multiply, and now we've got our 900 minus that 59.4, and that's going to be a positive 840.6. Is everyone all right with that so far? Now, we want this eventually to two places, so I'm going to go ahead and take the square root out to three. That way, when we round, we'll round to 2. So take it out one more than what we need. So I'm now going to use my calculator to get that 840.6 with the square root. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, second square root. We want that 840.6 there. And that looks like that's 28.6. 993, and that's over 5.4. We are going to get two solutions, so let's finish those out. So 30 minus 28.993 over 5.4. Let's go ahead and finish this one out. 
We'll do it first. So 30 minus 28.993. That comes out to be 1.007 over 5.4. We divide that out. That then comes out to be, when we round, 0 0.19 seconds. So I just divided it out, and there's one solution. Now I am going to get two solutions again. What's my other one going to be? Well, it's going to be 30 plus that 28.993 over 5.4. And adding those together, that is a 58.993 over 5.4. And then dividing out. That looks like when we round 10.92 seconds. So that's our, going to be our homework. So your homework now is 1.5. I also have...